Drastic fiscal measures for desperate fiscal times and a move that caught everyone off guard today. The co-chairman of President Obama's bipartisan deficit commission released their preliminary proposals to help cut the spiraling U.S. debt. Among the recommendations, $200 billion in domestic and defense spending cuts in 2015. Social security changes, including gradually raising the retirement age to 69 and reducing benefits to wealthy retirees and major overhaul of the tax code, all designed to cut $4 trillion from the U.S. deficit by the year 2022. These proposals and more will be put to a vote by the 18-member panel next month. 14 votes are needed to send the recommendations on to Congress, which would also need to approve them. The White House says it will let the commission finish its work before commenting, but the outgoing House Speaker Nancy Pelosi is not waiting. She's just released a statement calling the proposals, and I'm quoting her now, simply unacceptable. Let's bring in our senior congressional correspondent, Dana Bash. Uh, Dana, lots of reaction immediately. Why does uh, the speaker, the outgoing speaker, say it's simply unacceptable? Well, the Democrats are saying that. They're saying it's draconian. And then on the other hand, you have Republicans who, very interestingly, are a lot more circumspect and cautious uh, because they, of course, campaigned on the idea, uh, for the most part, of reducing the deficit. Um, but, you know, the mixed reviews also came from inside this commission. And that is significant because, as you mentioned, the proposal is guaranteed a House and Senate vote only, only if 14 out of 18 members approve it. But, you know, the commission chairs, uh, co-chairs who put this proposal out today, they said they knew it would be controversial and they wanted to put something down on paper that is in their word serious and significant and said it's really as much about starting a national debate about how to reduce the deficit as anything else this is the first time in my memory of washington either active or whatever this situation is now that it's all there we have harpooned every whale in the ocean and some of the minnows and no one has ever done that before. No one in this body or any body or any committee has ever laid it all out. Now, let me give you some more examples of some of the cuts in this proposal, and they really do range from big to small. The commission calls for lowering tax uh, rates on most tax brackets, but it also would eliminate a trillion dollars in tax breaks and subsidies, and that could include part of uh, or some of the home mortgage deduction, which one source I talked to, Wolf, called radioactive. Here's some other ideas. Cut a third of U.S. overseas mil military bases, cutting the federal workforce 10 percent by 2015, and even forcing the Smithsonian, which is now free to people going in, uh, force them to charge people. So that gives you a sense, and there's much, much more of what they're talking about to get to where they want to get, which is $4 trillion to add to, to take away from the deficit, I should say. Some are suggesting, Dana, that these proposals on Social Security are, are particularly explosive. Tell our viewers why. That's right. You know, you first of all have uh, a new proposal out there to effectively means test, which would, which would mean that those who are the wealthiest Americans wouldn't get as much in terms of benefits when they get Social Security. But there's also raising the retirement age, change the, changing the cost of living adjustment, uh, increasing the amount of income that is subject to Social Security taxes. Democrats are blasting this wolf. They see that say that increases the gap between rich and poor, and it does it on the backs of seniors. I think the AFL-CIO was probably the most blunt, and the message that they sent was that this commission is telling working families, drop dead. Wow. All right, uh, Dana, thanks very much. Let's uh, dig deeper right now in these new proposals to try to cut the deficit and deal with the national debt. We're joined by Democratic Congresswoman Jan Schakowsky of Illinois, along with our senior political analyst Gloria Borger and David Gergen. Uh, Congresswoman, let me start with you. Uh, you hate these proposals, and, and you're a member of this commission. Why? Well, I'm a member of the commission. We were told from the beginning that nothing would be done to Social Security that would affect current beneficiaries. And of course, the proposal does exactly that. It changes the cost of living adjustment, the way we calculate it, that would affect current beneficiaries. And of course, in addition, does raise the age of, uh, of retirement that will affect all future beneficiaries as, as well. That's a non-starter. It's just not going to happen. And in terms of Medicare, um, which is, takes an increasing bite out of Social Security, we, we see that the proposal includes increased cost sharing for seniors who are already spending about 30 percent of their income on health care. So uh, you're, you're going to see absolutely a firestorm of uh, opposition from, uh, from older and near older Americans against this proposal.
the, why did they release these recommendations publicly today? Because it caught all of us by surprise, Congresswoman. Well, you're not the only one. We went into the meeting today thinking that this was going to be a, uh, the, 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 the co-chair's proposal, um, and that's what we got. And until the very end, about uh, an hour and a half into the meeting, we thought that it was going to be um, just a closed meeting and that we would reconvene next week to talk about those proposals. All of a sudden, it was suggested that why don't they release it publicly, and sure enough, a 1 o'clock press uh, conference was called, and that was that. I, uh, I objected to that, but uh, here we are. So we were surprised as well. Let, let me bring David Gergen and Gloria to this conversation as well. David, you know these two co-chairmen, Alan Simpson, the former Republican senator from Wyoming, Erskine Bowles of North Carolina. He was Bill Clinton's chief of staff at the White House. If, if you're going to deal with with the national debt and cutting that national debt, you're going to have to bite the bullet and make difficult decisions on Social Security, Medicare, entitlements, national security spending, and taxes. There's no other way, is there? There's no other way. And I, I must say, look, our, our political leaders, uh, uh, with the support of the American people, have put us on, our, on, on a road to bankruptcy. Uh, and now it's going to take acts of leadership and courage to get us off and, and to get us to a much better place. And in my judgment, the proposals have been put forward are sensible. You can disagree with aspects of them, but there's no other way you're going to get there with, without a package like this. And it was an act of political courage uh, for Erskine Bowles and, and uh, Alan Simpson, the co-chairs, to put this forward, this uh, set of proposals today. And for those who reject them out of hand, I think it's an act of political irresponsibility and indeed political cowardice. You know, I would, I would like to hold ask on, Hold on, Gloria, hold on. I just, I just want the Congresswoman to respond, then I want to bring you in. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Congresswoman. All of us agree that there has to, that we're on an unsustainable uh, path fiscally, but we also, there are certain aspects of this that are just not going to, not acceptable. Well, when uh, Erskine but, Bowles and Alan Simpson announced the proposal, they said that about 70 to 75 percent is coming from cuts, and about 25 to 30 percent come from revenue. Well, some of us think that that is not a good balance, and in terms of Social Security, they claim that 57 percent comes from cuts, but the uh, Social Security subcommittee of the, uh, uh, the um, Ways and Means Committee says actually it's closer to 76 percent of the changes to Social but, Security but come from cuts. But Congresswoman, with, with all due respect, don't you have to start somewhere? The American people just had an election. They said they want the deficit taken care of. They want it fixed. This is not a proposal to privatize Social Security in any way. It's a very gradual raising of the retirement age. So why not say, instead of being reflexively negative, why not say, okay, let's talk about this if uh, we also talk about X, Y, and Z? Well, first of all, let's talk about $700 billion um, if we don't um, extend the, if we do extend the Bush tax cuts for the, the wealthiest, the same people who seem amenable to the cuts in Social Security want to see us extend tax cuts for the wealthiest Americans. Um, we are concerned that for older Americans who have an average income of about $18,000 a year, and, and by the way... But there's Social a Secu safety net in this. There is a safety net in this. For, for the poorest on Social Security in, this, in, in the chairman's mark? Uh, again, the committee um, staff of the Social Security subcommittee says that, in fact, it will increase poverty, not decrease poverty, because the qualifications for getting that uh, benefit, that increased benefit, it, uh, look, we, of course we need to discuss this, and of course we need to make cuts. There are cuts we agree on. And I think that we may come up with an agreement, uh, maybe not a, a totally comprehensive one by December 1st, I agree with that. We should go with that. Congresswoman, yeah, can I just ask you this? Uh, uh, Gloria points out there, there is a safety net here, and there are also tax increases on the uh, affluent in this package. Mm -hmm. And the real question is going to be, are, are, are you willing to say, if the Republicans were to agree to raise taxes, which so far they've been resisting, are you willing to do a serious entitlement reform? If both sides, if the Democrats refuse to, do, to touch Social Security and Medicare, and, and Republicans refuse to raise taxes, why are we in the rest of the country to conclude anything but that you all can't govern? But see, we can fix Social Security in a very simple way. Look, the proposal we was can? not to... Yes, we can. The, the proposal was not, by the way, to use Social Security at deficit reduction. That's a good thing. But it's thing. not. It was They're not. Make, it, the no, money's going not. back into Social Security. I just said that. I just said that. It was right. not. That is a good thing. Mm -hmm. uh, it is for the, the long-term solvency of Social Security. But to do it 76% from benefit cuts, 
Uh, no, I, that is not acceptable, and we need to take a different look at it. Uh, Congresswoman, you know these 18 commissioners. You're one of them. Uh, you need 14 in order to send this, these recommendations to the House and the Senate uh, for, as legislation. Do you think 14 members, a supermajority, will agree on a package to send to Congress? The question is how, 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 how comprehensive that package will be. I think there are a number of things we can agree on. For example, there is a large consensus around um, de defense cuts. There's, there is a consensus around some of the tax expenditures, which are just the same thing. Those are tax breaks that what, are the same the, things as spending. What, what, could, what, what tax what, expenditures are you willing to agree on? Right. I, I think that we could agree on taking a look at the, um, what, how much uh, the value of a home that gets exempted from uh, from any kind of uh, taxes, we could look at mortgage, 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 deduction. mortgage interest deduction. Not, but not, but not to eliminate the mortgage interest reduction. I think that is a non-starter. But, but for Congresswoman, many people. most of these Republicans and a lot of Democrats say no new taxes. They will resist anything that feels like taxes are going up. Well, I'll tell you what, you have to talk to the Republicans about that, and that agrees by, that includes, by the way, their resistance to uh, the top 2% getting taxed uh, right now. And, extend, and they want to uh, extend the, uh, the Bush tax cuts. But, you know, yeah. the Republicans have not come out and said, we don't like X, Y, and Z. They have, they have held their fire. So I guess my question is, why not hold your fire until you meet as a committee and perhaps can try a commission and try and present something right. to the United States Congress? Well, I think certainly we're going to come up with a proposal, and I believe that we can come up with a proposal that reaches the $250 billion mark by, uh, by 2015. But I think it is important to lay some ground rules that um, Social Security and Medicare, certainly as proposed um, by the, the two co-chairmen, is just not going to hold, that it's a non-starter for, uh, for many of us. Jan Chikowski is the congresswoman from Illinois. Uh, congresswoman, thanks very much for coming in. We'll continue this conversation. I look forward to it. And thanks to Gloria and David as usual as well. Uh, having baby